What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Mike Dyke. I'm a master plumber and HVAC contractor in the states of New York, South Carolina, and Florida. And this morning, I just pulled up to my first service call of the day. We're doing some maintenance on their heating systems. One of the things I'm gonna do before I get out of the truck, make sure I got some business cards in my pocket and get some stickers that we're gonna put onto the equipment. Be prepared for the job, have the right tools for the job, and be punctual upon arrival. All right, we got two carrier performance series gas-fired furnaces here. Both are 90 plus percent efficient, and you can tell that by the PVC vent piping that's present on both equipments. If it was an 80 percent, you would have stainless uh, steel piping going into a chimney, for example. Uh, but here we got PVC and. 96.5 on this and probably the same on that since they are do look identical we're going to take a just a visual inspection we have 24 inch wide models this one's mounted in an upflow fashion that one's mounted installed horizontally from return left to right supply air we have one condensate pump for the humidifier and the condensate coming from the Heat exchanger, it looks like we're going into a copper tube and I can guarantee you this one, we're gonna start to get pinhole leaks in this copper and you're already starting to see it there. The condensate that these furnaces produce, these 90 plus percent efficient furnaces, um, the condensate is very acidic. And if there's any copper or brass in that discharge piping, it's gonna rot out. You can start to see it with that right there. And I don't want to touch it because we're going to accelerate the wear and tear process. Looks like it goes across and down and goes all the way that away into the abyss of a crawl space. Um, we also have a condensing tankless water heater right here. And this condensate goes into that pump. And it looks like, let's just see, it looks like it goes up and around and then... I don't know where it disappears to. It's a cross, but it appears to be all three eighths tubing here and goes there. Wow, it just keeps going. They got very creative. At least they didn't discharge it right outside where it could freeze. Anyway, we we're doing some maintenance. We're going to notice that the exhausts are going outside. Fresh air is being taken from this room. Interesting. Very, very interesting. One other observation, we have this boiler right here, and we do have a condensate neutralizer on this one. And that goes, looks like it goes into a drain. Um, it would be wise to take that tankless water heater, these two, and have them discharge into here. That would probably be the wise thing to do when, when the time comes. Hmm. I wonder if the condensate that's acidic will destroy that pump. Probably eventually it will. I'll probably kill that pump there too eventually. All right, let's take a look under the hood here. Thought I got a whiff of gas there. Okay, there's our hot surface igniter. Here's our gas valve. This is our inducer assembly. We have two pressure switches here. Condensate trap. All right, we have a uh, high temperature plenum switch right there. Rollout switch number one, number two. Hot surface igniter is dead straight ahead. Let's go into the blower compartment. And taking a look here, let's do a quick little identification of components that we see here. This is the transformer. This is the furnace control board. There's another transformer there. Interesting. Door switch looks like it's been bypassed. And here's our low voltage wiring to our thermostat. You can tell because it's multiple wires and here's our low voltage going to our condenser, condensing unit. Um, no, I was wrong, sorry. 
that's for a humidifier. So we have a direct connection on the board and common for that humidifier control, which is right there. So let's take a look at that humidifier panel. Uh, that's one of those CE Northeast models. Definitely has a water panel in here. It took a little extra on it, but. Hmm. And there's that water panel. Uh, she's looking pretty, pretty duty. to replace the water panel here. All right, so I removed the water panel from the system and, oh man, he did not let us know that he had a humidifier to change. So we're gonna have to get that water panel for this carrier humidifier. You think they would put like the model number or replacement part number on the panel itself, but nope, they don't because that's carrier for you. All right, I got my furnace switch off, power's off. I uh, looked up the part number uh, using the CE Northeast app uh, for the filter media panel. Cross-reference that to supplyhouse.com, copied the link and sent it to the homeowner by text, asking him to order this. He's a mechanically inclined individual, so I don't need to order this, mark it up, and then come back here and charge him for labor and time on site to install a humidifier filter pad showing value that we care and we want to keep money in his pocket whenever possible. Power's off. We're going to pull out that flame sensor using a quarter inch driver. Okay. She looks fairly clean, but we're going to take some scratchy paper anyway and clean that off. Now there are some individuals that like to use a dollar bill. I like to use scratchy paper. You can also use like steel wool. Some people say that you're taking off the protective coating. And I'm like, well, the protective coating is sitting in a very, very hot flame for most of its life. A little bit of scratchy paper is not going to hurt. It's a piece of steel, for crying out loud. All right, so that flame sensor, that piece of steel is back in place. Um, I'm going to separate the wiring harness for the hot service igniter. And let's uh, check the resistance with an ohm meter. I'm using the Fluke 902 FC. This is perfect for what we do. The only thing it does not test for, which I wish it did, is millivolts. But other than that, I test uh, for voltage, resistance, temperature with the thermal couple that you can plug into the bottom of it, uh, and testing capacitors. So, and of course, clamp on amp meter. So let's test the resistance on here. All right, so I have these little alligator clips onto the end of my probes. I'm reading 52.5 ohms. So we're good on resistance for a hot service igniter, which is in there. Let's see if I can show you. All right, next I'm gonna check my outlet gas pressure or the manifold gas pressure. I am uh, taking an Allen key and I am removing the plug on the outlet side of the gas valve. Right there, every model is different, so your mileage may vary. Uh, and this will only be done by qualified people. Do not risk touching this. If you're not qualified to do so, you can kill yourself and the people who live in your home, so don't do it. All right, so I have my digital two-port manometer hooked up to the outside of the gas valve. We're going to turn the power back on. We're going to do a power a heating cycle for a call for heat, and we're going to make sure that our gas pressure is where it should be, which is around 3.5 inches of water column. All right, we're going to verify what the actual furnace needs by looking at the rating plate. This is on the inside cover of it, and we have our altitude of 0 to 2,000 feet. We need to be between 3.2 to 3 point inches of water column. If you're at different elevations or over 2,000 feet, you're going to refer to the manual. All right. Let's turn her on. 
and let's get a call for heat. All right, I installed a jumper between W and R. W is the heating circuit, R is our voltage. A little jumper there that energized the inducer assembly. We have our high surface igniter energized right now. And we're gonna see what kind of pressure we get once the main valve opens. Ignition. We're at 3.5 inches of water column, which is good. There's our blower, active. Excellent. All right, next we're going to do a combustion analysis. Uh, in a previous service call, probably last year, we drilled a hole in the exhaust piping for our combustion analyzer probe to be inserted. I removed the piece of mastic tape that's there. My Testo 320 combustion analyzer is on. We're gonna put this inside there. And we're gonna take a combustion reading. Okay, we'll let it stabilize, so we'll come back to this in about five minutes. It's been a few minutes. Take a look at some numbers here. Uh, we have a stack temperature of 97 degrees. That's the temperature of the exhaust gases leaving the furnace into this white PVC pipe, which then vents outside. Uh, if you notice, they're using non-cellular core. You don't want to use cellular core PVC. It will rot away. So 97 degrees of stack temperature. We have an O2 reading of 8%. We have 21 parts per million of carbon monoxide. So right now, based on those calculations, those numbers, those results, we're at 96.5% efficient, and we have 7.23% of CO2. Those are all numbers that I'm, com I'm comfortable with. Very, very nice. So we've just basically summed up the service call for maintenance on this furnace. We identified uh, the part needed for the humidifier uh, evaporator panel. We checked incoming gas pressure. Sorry, we checked outlet pressure on the gas valve. We checked the resistance on the hot surface igniter. We cleaned the flame sensing rod and we did a visual inspection overall of the entire furnace and finished up with a combustion analysis. Now, because this furnace uses an ECM blower motor, there really isn't um, for lack of better words, an easy way to test for amperage draw. I can do an amperage draw overall on the entire furnace. So we can do that. And I'm going to do that by taking my amp meter, clamp on amp meter right here. Let's put that onto that black wire. We're at 8.7 amps, right? And let's do this something right here. Let's take on that bottom cover. Move this out of the way a little bit. Right there, bingo. Let's install our bottom panel. Now I still gotta remove the jumper wire there. So to prevent any shocking to the heat exchanger, I just flip the switch to the off position on the gas valve. I take off the access panel door. And normally this would be needed because when I remove that access panel door, the blower compartment door, we're gonna kill power, right, to the blower and everything else, the whole furnace. I want it to cool off that heat exchanger because the flame was just running through it. So now it's a good opportunity pull out that jumper and uh, assist the back of the operation. 
Now I'm going to show you a little tech tip. To make that little jumper wire, I cut a piece of that yellow wire that was not used on the thermostat wire. I removed it from R, right? And then I put a Wago leaving the wire connected to W. The next guy is going to thank me for having that jumper in place. And by having the, the Waco on there as, as opposed to a wire nut, I know that's never going to fall off. One more. One more thing for you guys. I printed the combustion test results and I put them in my Uline shipping baggie. All right. I leave the top open because in the past two times we were here, we did a combustion test, put the print out there. I got my label right there. And if you guys thought I was going to put some mastic back over this hole, you thought wrong. We need to drill this out a little bit more first. Did you really think that I was going to leave mastic tape on the PVC pipe hole that we drilled for the combustion analyzer probe? Come on. You guys should know me by now. That's how we do things around here.